Hello, this is Shiley from Sheepishly Made and MCS Livestock. Welcome to March's Bird of the Month wool painting tutorial, the Downy Woodpecker. I'm going to start off by showing you my supplies here, like in all the videos. So I have my large bath towel folded in half on the bottom of my project. And then I have two layers of bubble wrap. And my fabric mesh that lays over top of the wool as you're felting. You want it to be a little bit bigger than the project you're working on. I have a hand towel to use for rolling. And my roller. You can use um, any type of roller you have. Um, we recommend a foam roller um, under 4 inches in diameter. I just have my homemade one here. And then you're going to need some soap and something to help wet down your project. I use a water bottle with some holes cut in the top. And you want to have hot soapy water inside the water bottle. If you're using liquid soap, make sure to use just a small amount. And then have an extra towel or cloth to help soak up some extra water in case um, you need it. And here are the different colors of wool I'm using. Um, I have some browns and tan for the tree and black, white, and red for the bird. And I have blues and greens for the background. If you're using one of my kits, um, those colors can vary. So we're going to make my project about um, 8 by 8 as the finished product. So I'm going to start out making a little bit bigger than that. So you want to take your wool and just lay out real thin pieces, pull out from the end of your roving. Um, this on the right side is going to be the tree that the woodpecker is on. So I'm just laying out the browns and tans um, here and there to make it kind of a varying shade of color. I'm going to do the same thing for the background colors. You can use whatever colors you want for the background. If you want just a blue sky or you can do green, whatever you want to do, have fun with it. I used some bright colors because I wanted to make the bird pop out. So the first layer we're going to do, we're going to lay it up up and down the fibers and then the second layer you're going to lay the fibers left to right so we're on layer two just real thin layers and layer three we're going to go up and down again and then layer four we're going to start to lay our on layer three, this is our final layer, um, we're going to lay out the woodpecker on top of what we already have done. So you want to make a nice white belly that curves out and then down into a tail. And then the back of the woodpecker is black here and the head on top. So the black you want to, or the back, you want to have just a very straight line. Um, they kind of lean out from the tree and make an angle with the tree. So if you can see that there, um, the woodpecker has a little bit of a white down the back and it has some white stripes on the head with a little bit of red at the back um, top of the head. They have a nice strong beak. If you're new to wet felting, um, I recommend leaving the smaller details to when we are needle felting. They sometimes will move around a little bit and I don't want you to get frustrated with it. I'm just adding the leg there at the end coming out from the belly, grabbing onto the tree. I'm just going to add a few details. Um, so I'm taking little pieces of white and blowing them up in my finger and laying them out for spots on the wing. This black part here is the wing. So they have these um, strings of white dots on their wing. And they're actually, there's one on each individual feather. Just going to lay those all out and we'll get to wet felt in here. So you want to take your fabric mesh and lay it over and then start wetting down your project. Whatever, using a spray bottle, water bottle, um, you just want to do a little bit of water at a time and then push down on the work very gently so you don't move all the wool fibers around. So start to press down, distribute the water through the wool. You want the wool to be completely soaked through but not laying in a puddle. 
So don't create a puddle, just use a little bit of water at a time. Um, usually the edges are the hardest to get completely soaked through. So if you want to start from the middle, press it down and press the water out gently. And we're going to get into felting here. So I'm taking my bar of soap and um, moving it over the surface of the mesh. This just helps me glide along the surface. And then you can start by putting your hands in the middle and pressing outwards to distribute the water and the soap a little bit more. Every once in a while you want to pick up your mesh and make sure your pieces are where you want them. If you need to adjust a little bit, you can do that at this point in the felting process because the fibers aren't sticking together quite yet. So I needed a little bit more white, so I'm adding some more white. And then you can start moving your hands back and forth gently. This is sped up, so I'm moving a lot slower than this. But just start gently rubbing all over the surface. And just checking to make sure the fibers aren't sticking to my mesh. Sometimes they'll felt right to the mesh. And once your fibers are sticking together and not pulling up with the mesh, we can start the rolling process. So you want to take your bubble wrap and your wool and your fabric mesh and roll it all up in your roller. And then take your towel that you're going to roll with and then roll up your already rolled up um, project into the towel <clears throat> and we're going to start felting here so you're going to do sets of 25 rolls back and forth so you just go back and forth 25 times just in a small area and then do a quarter turn do another 25 do another turn 25 until you get to 100 and then after you do your 100 rolls you're going to un roll the piece check and make sure everything looks good still and then rotate your project put the mesh back on roll it back up and do another set of 100 rolls unroll your project after your 100 rolls then we're going to flip it over and do another set of 100 and i'm unrolling and then we're going to rotate one last time and roll again so you'll have a total of 400 rolls and when i'm talking about rolls that's just a little back and forth movement on your roll so we've done 400, so I'm going to unroll the project. And then we're going to do the pinch test. So you want to pinch your fabric and pull up. And if it feels like one piece of fabric, you we can move on. If it still feels like individual fibers, you're going to need to roll a little bit more. So for a final felting process, I'm just going to repeat the hand felting I did at the beginning, adding a little bit more soap and water. Some of my water came out. And you can really vigorously rub it now. <clears throat> Just soaking up some extra water and soap along the way. Sometimes I use a little bit more soap than the average wet felter. But I like using more soap. It helps me move better across the piece. And once your piece is completely felted, that all feels like one piece of fabric, then we can move on to the folding process. So folding is the process of shrinking down your project. So one of my favorite ways is to roll it up on my roller, just the um, fabric that you're making itself. And kind of do the same thing that we did with the rolling it up with the bubble wrap and the towel. You can do it one way, rotate it, flip it over, rotate it again. Um, if it gets loose on your roller, that's fine. Let it get loose and roll over top of itself. It helps um, shrink it down. And you'll see it, as it starts to shrink, you can kind of see little wrinkles in your fabric. And after we get done rolling it, we'll do another folding process. My absolute favorite. I love watching the fabric shrink. So this way, you want to roll it up really, really tight just on itself. And you can roll it either on your table or in between your hands. I recommend focusing on one small 
area at a time and rolling that part up really tight and rolling it between your hands. So I usually do like a top, center, and bottom part. But you want to make sure if you're doing this that you do it on all sides of the project and do it face up and face down. So go through the motions of doing it one way, rotate it, then flip it over and rotate it again. So you've done all sides. And you want to keep doing this until your project is shrunk down. Uh, most projects um, can range about 40% shrinkage from the original size. Depends on the type of wool you're using. And that is the felting process. So you want to make sure you lay your piece out to completely dry after rinsing it thoroughly to get all the soap out. So we'll move on to needle felting. So here I have my mat underneath my project and my felting needles that I'm going to use today. I use a 36 triangle and a 40 spiral. And then I have a few different colors of wool, gray, white, black, a little bit of red. I'm not going to use the brown in this video. But I'm just going to start by um, adding a little bit of white. The white I used at first wasn't super bright, so I'm just brightening it up out of anything. If um, the white you used, if you're seeing through some of the background colors, that might be another reason to add more white to it to brighten up the project. And then it has a little bit of white actually under the chin as well, as what I call the chin right under the beak. And then I'm extending the wing, making it a little bit more curved. So I'm bringing it down into the belly and then down and straight back. And the end of the wing should actually overlap off the back a little bit. And the tail should come straight down with the line of the back. And then we're working on the foot here. I'm just adding a little curved toe there at the end for the so-called toes of the bird. And then I'm adding a little bit of gray on top to give it some depth. So you want to bring a nice strong leg down out of the belly and then make two toes that go out and curve down. And I'm adding just a little bit of kind of light feathering here over the leg using a little tiny bit of white. And we're going to work on the head a little bit. The stripe here needs to be a little bit higher and straight back. So I'm going to fix this because wet felting does um, move your fibers around if you're not super careful. So I'm going to actually move that white stripe up and then add some black underneath of it to cover up the white I had there before. And that's the wonderful thing about felting is you can fix your um, mistakes. And add in a little bit of white on the top of the beak. And I'm going to work on the beak itself here. So my beak got a little wide. So one of the things you can do is grab the outside edge of the beak with the tip of your needle and kind of push it down and in and felt it down. I go over this technique in some of my other needle felting videos as well. I'm just adding some um, gray to the beak to make it a little bit lighter. They kind of have more of a grayish beak than black. Now here, I um, skipped part of the video um, where I worked on the eye and a little bit part of the head here. So I'm going to show you um, and go back over the process of what I did. So the stripe, I made it a little bit straighter from the beak to the back of the head. Um, but for the eye, I used a little bit of dark gray and I balled it up and made like a little circle where the eye is and felt that down first. And then I took a little bit of white and just did a very fine edge on the bottom part of where my eye is. As you can see that white line there underneath the eye. Just want to do a very small amount. And then I added the black to the eye over top of the gray. You can leave a little bit of gray showing around the edges by just a little ball of black. And then you want to put your white reflection in the eye. This makes it look very lifelike. Just a little bit of white in the eye. Use your 40 spiral needle for this if you have one. And it should look like the picture. 
So moving on to the back, um, I'm make, adding a little bit of white there, brighten it up, and then making a little bit of feathering with the black. And I do this just by taking small kind of wispy pieces of wool and laying them out and felting them down. I'm doing the same thing at the top of the wing here, adding a little bit of white and then some wispy bits of black to overlap some of the white circles there. And now we're going to add in some of our white spots and brighten them up over the whole wing. You want them to be in stripes. Yeah, actually they are on individual feathers. So each feather has several spots of white. And when they close up their wings, then they look like they're in a row together. And now I'm going to make it look like more individual feathers. So I'm taking a little bit of black, real small, thin pieces, making them real long, pulling them um, so into a long piece. And then I'm going to string them in between our circles that we made. So you can see the individual feathers forming. As you just take the black and string it from the top and down along in between your circles. Sometimes you can get the black wool to stretch out long enough that you can just use one piece or you can do it in several pieces. Just make sure you're using real thin. You just need small amounts. Um, use your 40 spiral needle or your fine felt needle, whatever kind you have. It works a little bit better for small pieces that you're working on. So we're just going to finish up here. We're almost done with the felting. So here is the completed piece. So if you have any questions, you can comment on the video or send me an email. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. If you like the Bird of the Month kits, you can subscribe in my Etsy shop. We're on March, so we'll see you again in April for the next Bird of the Month. Thanks for watching. Happy felting!